All right, everyone, good morning. So we've got about 15 minutes to the bell. So I'm gonna give you guys my watch list. There's no gappers. There, We don't have any gappers that look good. So this morning, uh, I don't have uh, a watch list based on the gap scan. I'll be watching the high day momentum scanner right here when the bell rings. Our leading gapper is NSEC, but it's a buyout. And it had more volatility than you would typically expect from a buyout, but uh, the news is that it's a buyout, 16.35 in cash. Uh, so, you know, a, a nice buyout for anyone that was holding it, but realistically, probably not very many people. It's never really had a lot of volume. It's just sort of been like a, a no-name company, it seems like. Um, reverse splits a while ago, but it's never really had a lot of volume. So. Anyways, I don't know, kind of weird, but so that one's a buyout. The second leading gapper, ARDS, is a 12 million share float, but is very uh, thickly traded. And, and you can see just looking at the level two on it, uh, the level two right now, actually not too bad. Uh, it was crossed there for a second, uh, 1918. But you can see a big stack of buyers there, but then equal size stacks of sellers. It actually looks more like, you know, 40, 50 million share float or higher. So this one, very sluggish price action. It's below the volume weight average price, which is at 228. So no interest in that. Next one down, NXTP, 73 cent stock, only 7,000 shares of volume with a 68 million share float. I don't even have to look at the chart to know that I have no interest in that stock. LVO, same, no interest, don't even have to look at the chart. HOFV, don't even have to look at the chart. The float's too high, the price is too low. GLPG, the float's too high, the price is too high. Now, price is too high, float's too high. HZO, Kern, no, price is too low, both have no volume. These are now getting into sort of the bottom of the gap scan. Uh, there's just nothing gapping up with, uh, with volume that looks good. So if you store it by highest volume, you would see that you've got some gappers in the lower price range, ARDS, um, that we already looked at, that's got more volume. DOYU has more volume, the float's higher. But these aren't the type that I would be wanting to day trade, so I don't have any interest in these ones. Um, sorting by float, we've got some high float gappers, both to the downside and the upside, some low float gappers. NSEC, we already looked at, TSRI, this one's got no volume yet. So one of the things I had mentioned was that uh, you know, at this point, obviously, we have these ebb and flows in the market where we have hot streaks, we have cold streaks, uh, and that's sort of regardless of the strategies that you trade, I suppose. But um, you can see losers sort of clustered together back there in September, a couple losses there, a couple losses in this area kind of clustered together. So if I look at my calendar, you can see that the last like two weeks has been pretty brutal. The good thing is when you're kind of at the bottom of these cold streaks, you know, it can't get a lot worse, so it can only get better. And that's something to be optimistic about. It's good to keep practicing. It's good to stay sharp. It's good to keep watching the market and watching for opportunities. But something that is challenging is during cold streaks in the market, um, you know, and it doesn't really matter, you know, and you, you know, you could see I had a really nice green stretch through October, November, a little red in December, a bit of red in September. July, you know, not great. April, not great. May, a two-week stretch there that wasn't great. January, a two-week stretch there. So these are, you know, all of this is very common. This was actually a six-day red stretch. One, two, three, four, five, six red days in a row there from February into March of 2020. So November was terrible. You know, so I mean, it, it's just... It's just the way it is with trading. You get through the cold streaks and then you get the hot streaks. And the hot streaks wouldn't feel so good if you didn't have the cold streaks that created that balance that makes you feel so uh, so low. When, when you're down, you feel like you're never gonna be up. When you're up, you feel like you're never gonna be down. But the market gives you those reminders that it is always, there's always a balance. There's the hot momentum, then the cold momentum. So, you know, we're in a little bit of a, obviously cold stretch right now. And uh, the only thing we can do is you know hunker down and get through it and so that's what i'm you know that's what i'm doing same as as everyone else looking forward to getting to the other side of it and we'll be very grateful for the gains uh, when i do 
So, you know, as I sit right now, I, I just, I, I think that, and, and something to be mindful of that's challenging is the fact that you could have, you could have a chart pattern and I'll just, I don't know, let me just find a good chart pattern just to show you, for instance. Um, oh, let's see. Um, where's a good one? Um, well, these ones actually aren't, aren't super good examples because they're all uh, stocks that have already been pretty strong. Um, I mean, the stock, you know, has already been strong because it went from eight all the way to 24. Um, you know, maybe maybe something like this, you know, ORGS, whatever. So, you know, say you had a stock that had gone this morning from 520 to six. This is the chart you're looking at. And if I was looking at this and we were sitting at like 580, I'd be thinking, okay, I'm a buyer over six. But this same chart in a hot market, you get the break of six up to 642, 660, 680 to seven, halts up. In a cold market, the same exact chart may not get that follow through. And that's really hard and confusing because it's the same exact chart. So how is it possible that the same exact chart resolves so well in, in one instance and so poorly in another? There's an underlying component uh, that you know is, will lead to the success or failure of, of a chart. And it's the uh, trader psychology in the, the larger market, especially for momentum. Are we in a market where we're seeing a lot of momentum? Because if you are, you're gonna see a lot more buying, you're gonna see a lot more volume on the breakouts. Short sellers are gonna be more cautious at shorting things that are strong. Momentum traders are gonna be more aggressive at buying things that are strong. That creates a stronger imbalance to the buy side. The same setup in a cold market, short sellers are gonna be more aggressive. They're gonna have big orders lined up at six, 6.10, whatever. Long traders are gonna be more cautious. They've seen enough stocks pop and drop that they're not gonna to wanna to get smoked. So they're just gonna sit and wait. And even short sellers might just sit and wait because they'll think, well, what am I gonna short this at six down to 580? That's that's not even a big winner. We, we all do better when there's more volatility. Uh, I mean, that's just, that's a fact. But, um, you know, if we're not getting, if we're not getting that, that price action, then there's really nothing we can do. So my philosophy is, uh, you know, to be looking and waiting for the next stock that surprises us. It's going to have to be a surprise. Something that looks predictable like this, you know, I think initially it's going to, you know, it's going to be a struggle because there's so many traders out there that are just sitting on the sidelines waiting for uh, momentum to pick up. And if you keep trying to take a stab at the first one that looks good, you know, you could have 15 in a row that look good and you think is the one but just keep failing. So a couple of you guys just called out M M MDJH. Let's see, MDJH. So this one um, is, you know, it's on the gap scanner here. It's got a 1 million share float, which is fine. Uh, but look at that first candle. It popped all the way up to, one, to 287 and then dropped all the way back down. So the pivot right there is 56. How can you trust it? How can you trust that this will break that level? Does this have news? doesn't have a lot of volume. It's below the 200 moving average. In a hot market, none of that matters. In a hot market, this thing would probably already be at three. But in the market that we're in right now, we just keep seeing short sellers lining up and you keep seeing long traders sitting on the sidelines. So, you know, prove me wrong. Maybe this will be the one that goes, but this is the range that it's in. 23 low, 56 top. So 23 down there is the bottom. If it breaks that level, it's gonna pull back. If it breaks over 56, your next target would be up here at 87. But basically what happened on this is in, in two candles on very light volume, you know, it made a big pop. And now it's in a consolidation range as, you know, traders are just looking at it and asking, can I possibly trust it? What's the daily history of this stock? Shows some pops and drops. You know, there's some green candles in there, but pops and drops. So I'm mentioning it's a Chinese company, so we know that uh, those are a bit more heavily shorted right now, which mean not, not to say that it's got high short interest, but just that uh, traders expect them to pop and then fade. So, I mean, you know, this is the second leading gapper and at this point there's no trade on it. I mean, it's, it's hard to trust and that's the challenge. So, you know, Hey, 
if it proves itself, if it goes to 290 to three and, and halts, then that's fine. But the fact is, uh, even then, I'd be a bit nervous. You know, on SRRA two days ago, we had this nice rip through VWAP into a halt. And I was like, all right, it's game time. Here we go. It resumed and just sold off completely. So we had kind of a little bit of a, a short little burst of momentum and then it just, it, it faded, it was gone. And that was it. So that's, you know, again, some, a bunch of people have asked, have you seen anything like this before? You know, is this normal? I've seen all of this before. None of this is unusual. These are just, this is just part of the ebb and flow of trading. And one of the things that's challenging as a beginner trader is you, of course, want to try to build consistency. And it's easier to build consistency, obviously, when the market is hot. It's harder when the market's cold. One trade a day, the small account way. But in a market like this, you may not even see one trade a day that, that is trustworthy. And so then you have you know multiple days where either you're forcing it and trading kind of not very good setups or where you're just not trading at all and you feel like, huh, I'm not really getting in my practice here. I'm not getting my one trade a day. I feel a little impatient. And I get that. I mean, I feel that way too, even though I'm not doing a small account challenge, I still feel the same way. I want to be trading every single day. I want to be booking some profit. But uh, I have to be careful not to you know, end up forcing poor quality setups and uh, digging myself a hole. And that's what I'm not super good at. You know, that's been my weak, weak point is that, you know, I trade aggressively, I go big, and when the market's hot, I crush it. But when the market cools off, you know, I kind of just keep getting caught in those bull traps and I dig myself a hole. And that's what I've done here in, in January. I went from up 100,000 on the month to down 10,000 on the month. So I gave back like 110 grand. Uh, it's I'm not you know super happy about that, but it is what it is, and I I you know I feel I have this frustration of um, because this you know happens to me like every you know you you go back to long periods of time it's like every couple months you know I'll have these drawdowns where I'll I'll you know give back a hundred grand or whatever it is fifty grand and then I have to dig myself out of the hole sometimes I'll do it in one day. In December, I lost $55,000 in one day. Boom, gone. Now I made it back the next week and was back at my back at the top. This has been, you know, two weeks. Um, you know, these two weeks here, 16,000, 2,000, 39,000, up three, down 38, down 8,000. You know, so these are, these. there's no one in the world as a trader who's going to feel good when they're red five out of six days. No one on this day here Thursday after these five, red days and a small green day is going to feel good. Uh, you know, and I can't help but feel like, oh, I've, you know, I, I, I made a mistake. And I did make a mistake. I made a mistake on this day by being way too aggressive and getting stubborn. And I made a mistake on this day by giving into FOMO and being too aggressive and getting stubborn. So the thing that, you know, people will say, well, it's important to, you know, to have losses because you can learn from them. And I'm like, well, then why, am, why have I been trading for as long as I've been trading and I still catch myself, you know, falling into these traps in the market. That's where I start to get really frustrated with myself that I, you know, that I, I don't learn. And then I also sort of think, well, maybe it's a perception issue. Maybe I shouldn't be looking at this as um, looking at these losses as mistakes or as uh, failures because uh, they are just one component of a strategy. It's the other side of the coin. It's the balance. It's the yin and the yang, right? There's the green and there's the red. And no strategy would be a strategy if it didn't account for some degree of loss. So this is just, maybe that's why I don't feel like, you know, I'm learning because the strategy will always have some degree of loss. So, but there's $11 million of profit that stands behind this strategy. So anyways, um, you have my watch list. It's thin, uh, but we'll be watching the High Day Momo Scanner. Thank you for those tuning in on YouTube and Facebook. We'll keep trading uh, for Warrior Pro students. I do encourage you guys to join if you want to tune in for the whole broadcast from the mo moment I start streaming until the moment I turn off the broadcast. And let's see if we get uh, any opportunities today. And if not, we'll be back at it tomorrow and keep...